Ugh, however much sleep I got last night really does not feel enough, like enough at the moment. But that's what coffee's for, right? So why haven't I just jumped off trail for a day or two and gotten the ward issue taken care of? Because every time I am about to do something, it looks like I get different information. Taters and I were talking and messaging back and forth as I was coming along the ridge yesterday. And we were actually planning how to get me a couple of hours off trail to a foot specialist in like Roanoke and then take a couple of days off. And then she talks to a family member of hers who is apparently a foot doctor who's like, oh, no, 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 you don't want to do that. That would be bad. You're going to be off your feet for like a month. Instead, you just need to put duct tape on it, which has other issues. So, yeah, I'm just going to be dealing with this till Canada, aren't I? Okay, so two days of relative sun ahead and then the next big rainstorm arrives. Looks like Friday it's going to be pretty rainy and then that's going to continue on towards the weekend. So that should be a break from the heat at least. And maybe I get to try out that snazzy new rain skirt that I finally got. So apparently there is a deli in about nine miles or so, which allegedly does hot food like burgers. Am I excited? Hell no. Why? Because everything else has been closed lately. So I'm just going to assume it's closed and it'll be a pleasant surprise if I get there and they're actually open. Yesterday must have been harder than I thought. I mean, I did 24 miles and there was that big climb and the upper part was kind of rough, but I am just dragging like you wouldn't believe today. Hopefully I snap out of it at some point here because I got miles to do. Hey, look, more trees. Damn, that's a nice campsite. Okay, finally found a place open, got some hot food, got a surprisingly good burger, and got to chat with a whole bunch of other through hikers I've been seeing off and on for the last uh, couple of days. And now onward for another, I don't know, 12 plus miles. Looks like it's a uh, dry section up ahead. So I gotta make at least 12, fill up, and then it's whenever I can find a campsite. Okay, so this is the last water for a while, but I filled up at that outpost. If you look at my mileage for the last week or so, I keep pushing like 21, 23, 24, 25 miles just because uh, tent sites have either been full or there's just not enough of them. It does look like this section might be a little better at least. Also that burger back at the outpost and getting to chat with a bunch of other folks was really the sort of break I needed. Really nice section of trail today. Almost to the shelter. Apparently the water source isn't flowing great, but it's flowing. Okay, not even fully dark. Home sweet home for the night. This will work. I was able to get water at that last shelter, and as expected, there was a good number of people there. Life as usual. So I don't know how much it uh, comes across in the videos, but the days are just kind of uh, flowing together here. It's walking, you know, endlessly through forest, occasionally get a view or something like that, and then stop, then go, then stop, then go. Which isn't a bad thing. I mean, that's how you get miles behind you. And I uh, crossed the 600 mile mark yesterday, so there's that. It's been rather buggy out here, but fortunately most of them don't seem to bite. I do have an obnoxious number of what seem to be no see -em. Bites. I was kind of hoping I'd left those behind in Florida, but guess not. No mosquitoes yet. I assume at some point I'm going to hit the hordes. And still uh, not noticing many ticks. I've just seen one or two. So somebody had a mini meltdown outside of my uh, tent this morning. I guess he got down to the water source and the pools and little trickles were not quite sufficient for how he wanted to fill up. Uh, you tend to learn tricks out here. I mean, you can take leaves and make little spigots. You see that pretty often. Uh, depending on whether you're using a smart water bottle or a bag as a, like a C knock or the Sawyer bags, as dirty water, you know, those are better at scooping or uh, you might need a spigot. Honestly, easiest thing is we usually have extra Ziplocs that we've used for food. You can use that as a scoop and it saves you. Some people use their cook pots. I don't like doing that because technically, yes, when you boil things, it sterilizes them. But if you check the documentation, you're actually supposed to boil for a fair bit of time at a certain temperature. And I'm not always doing that with my meals, so not real safe. So another big advantage of me doing my morning coffee time is by the time I get out on the trail, generally the people from the last shelter have already gone past. So I don't have to worry about running into cobwebs all morning. If you remember like 
down when I was in Florida and some of the other trails I was walking having to like wave my hiking pole like that. I think I even got a picture of my glasses just coated with uh, spider webs. And then, you know, you run into a spider web and you're like, wait, I saw a spider in that. And then you can't find the spider. So you're walking along desperately trying to hunt and hoping it's not like a poisonous spider. <laughs> ah, that makes me nostalgic for Florida. I need to go do the Florida Trail again. <laughs> You'd be amazed how often out here you jump between, I love hiking and I hate hiking and eh, I'm pretty ambivalent to hiking, but I really wish I had a sandwich right now. And every now and then the amount of green out here just strikes me, especially when I get a view. Okay, now we get to see if Trent's is open and if they have sandwiches. And trucks and more hikers. And back to the trail. One hamburger, chicken tenders, and a bunch of drinks later. Also, one advantage of being caught up in this bubble is I get new friends every stop I make. I eventually ran out of people to talk to, so back on the trail. And up we go. Nothing like saving the big climb for the end of the day. Nice views out here when you can get to them. Okay, well, I had to push on to Duck Knob Shelter due to the lack of water on the latter part of the day. And one of my hiking poles just broke. Seems to be some uh, manufacturing defects with the uh, Black Diamond Alpine Z pole and I can't get their warranty department to answer me. So, that's fun. Anyway, just looking for a camp, gonna stop. First one I find. And it does look like the rain is back once again. Um, and it does look like I'm in the middle of some sort of a bubble. I stopped at an overlook last night and chatted with somebody and they said they'd tried to stay at the Woody Hole Hostel, which I guess is some big well-known hostel. And it was so busy, not only was there not like room in the bunkhouse or anything like that, but they wouldn't let them stay for dinner and they weren't letting people tent because they were just overwhelmed. And similarly, uh, looking ahead today, there is a town. That town has Mexican food and uh, I need to go into resupply anyway. And so I was looking at maybe getting a hotel room for tonight. That way I could, you know, eat a bunch. They're full, uh, no other options in town. So uh, looks like that's a no-go. Uh, it's just obnoxious to have to go, you know, well off trail to get food and back, you know, it burns such a big day. I'd rather you know, get a shower and everything if I can. Also, uh, this campsite is kind of a bummer. It is just covered with cigarette butts and uh, right around the back, just again, a ton of dirty toilet paper that's just been left lying out. Gotta love people. Also from the sound of it, might have had a bear wander by a little bit ago. Uh, I had the tent button up because of the rain, but from the sound of the woofing and everything, it sounded like it might've been one about you know, 10 feet that way. No biggie. They, they realize there's a human in here, and unless they've really been habituated, they take off. Okay, best laid plans don't even survive coffee time, apparently. Uh, Jen was able to book me a room at Angel's Rest Hostel. I'd still prefer to be in a hotel somewhere, but uh, is what it is. Um, I'm going to head into town. That way I can get Mexican food. Very important. Try and replace my hiking poles with at least something temporary and mail the broken ones out and then do, you know, a resupply because I'm getting worryingly low on coffee and everything. And then I'll have about another week of just uh, hopefully hitting, you know, my normal 20 to 24 miles a day. Uh, before Jen arrives, uh, I, it looks like I'm going to end up around Buena Vista when she gets here, which is actually past Roanoke, but that's what you get for trying to plan anything, right? So that's where I was camped last night, and the bear, I'm pretty sure, was right about there from the sound of it. Unfortunately, I only have about 10 miles into town. Oh, well, I'll throw my daily mileage off a little bit. So I always use hiking poles when I hike, have for years because of my knees. Whenever I've uh, stopped for a while, I tend to regret it. So uh, now that I only have one since my other broke yesterday, 
it's kind of amazing how much you can feel the difference in the upper body workout. So all I have is my right pole and you know, I can feel that this arm is uh, doing stuff while this one is not. Supposedly you can take about a third of the impact off of your knees if you use them correctly. And you know, I tend to use them pretty aggressively as I walk along. So I've been seeing these guys for quite a while, but all of a sudden this morning, there's like hundreds of them everywhere. Big ones, little ones. Okay, last mile down into VA 100, and then I'll be able to get a shuttle into town and have a place and food. This downhill goes significantly slower for me without the second hiking pole. I gotta watch it so I don't mess my knee up.